Next, let's get into the solver and specify the mathematical model, the governing equations and the corresponding boundary conditions. And before we do that, a note about the pressure. There are two kinds of pressures, the absolute pressure and the gauge pressure, and they are different by a constant, um, the reference pressure. So you take the gauge pressure and add it to, add the reference pressure to it and you'll get the absolute pressure. The reference pressure is something that the user picks and we will pick the reference pressure to be one atmosphere, which in terms of Pascals is a big number. 101, 325 pascals. And so since the absolute pressure is a big number over the plate, you're going to get very little variation in the absolute pressure. It's going to be in, you know, the sixth or the seventh significant digits. And that can lead to round off errors due to the finite position of the computer. So the solver works in terms of the gauge pressure. So essentially what we, what the solver is doing is just calculating deviations from the reference pressure. And to see how that, um, you know, uh, minimizes round off error, uh, if I look at a control volume, okay, and let's say um, the pressure here is P1 and the pressure here is P2, to find the net pressure force in this direction, the solver has to take the difference between P1 and P2. And if both of these are big numbers, you're going to get small, very small differences of big numbers. And that's the case if you're working to the absolute pressure. But in terms of the gauge pressure, that's going to be a small number. That's going to be a small number. And so you're going to, and the difference is going to be off the order of those. And that will minimize the, the round off error. That's just a quick explanation. My laminar pipe flow module in the EDX course has more um, under the model uh, setup uh, step. So I will switch to running uh, ANSYS on my local computer. For those of you who are uh, running it in apps on demand, you can continue doing it in apps on demand and it should look pretty much the same. And let me read in the file from apps on demand. So I'll say file, um, open, and I saved it in terms of WBPZ uh, from apps on demand. Um, so when I was in apps on demand, so I will open that. And then it asks me to save in the conventional format and I'll say save, I'll say replace. Okay, so I should be able to start off uh, from where I left off in apps on demand. And if I come here, I can see that, you know, I'm working in terms of the WBPJ now. One has to kind of be careful about keeping that straight. Um, and then when I exit, I will switch back to working in terms of WBPZ. Um, it's giving me some errors about, or warnings about, you know, the dot backup file, which I'll ignore. Uh, it, does, it doesn't affect me here, fortunately. Okay, so here I don't have a tick mark on mesh. That's because I need to right click on mesh and click update. Usually I, you know, very hesitant to click update because you can wait for a long time to start doing iterations and so on. In this case, you have to do it. And otherwise the, the name selections won't come into the solver. Okay. So now you get the tick and the name selections will be transferred into the solver. The fluent solver, I will start by right clicking on setup and say edit. And um, I'll say double precision. So that will use 64 uh, bits for each floating point number rather than 32. And that again reduces uh, the round off error. Uh, the trade off is that you'll use more RAM. And I'll say OK. And your default view uh, might be a little bit different from this. So if I go here, I can, I can switch between different views. So I, I just pick default. Um, and in apps on demand, you know, your real estate is a little bit lower. So I like to go and set tab graphics and console. So I can go between the console and the graphics. Uh, you might want to do that if you're on apps on demand. And so let's specify the governing equations. And if I go here, these governing equations are the default governing equations in the Fluent Solver. And so all we need to do is specify rho and mu, which you can think of as constants in the governing equations. 
So I'll go back here, I'll go under materials, I'll um, go to air, double click on it, and set density equal to one, and a question of viscosity equal to 10 to the power of minus four, one e to the power of minus four, and I discussed how this will give us the right um, Reynolds number. And I'll say change create and close. And I need to check that, you know, that, that material property is being assigned to the domain. So I'll come to cell zone conditions, fluid, BVP domain, and I can either double click or I can right click and say edit. And if I look here, it'll show me what the material properties are. Uh, and this is a good check to do. Uh, you can trip up if you have multiple materials. You you just modify it here. Um, and if you don't assign it here, you will see the wrong material type. I've seen students tripping up that way. Okay, so that's all there is to specifying the governing equations um, since these are the default governing equations in 2D. So let's move on to boundary conditions. Let's start off with... Um, the left boundary condition. So I'll go under, go to the solver, double click on boundary conditions, go to far field one, and we need to set the velocity here. Okay. And the boundary condition type that will give me that option is velocity inlet. And I will say velocity specification method components, and that's one meter per second. Now, this is an initial guess um, for the gauge pressure. So uh, you can ignore supersonic. This is, uh, this is a very low speed flow. And this is an initial guess. That, that'll get updated. It's not a boundary condition. So don't let that confuse you. And we will just set that uh, gauge pressure to be zero because our, our absolute pressure is going to be one atmosphere uh, close to one atmosphere everywhere and I'll say okay and then if I go to far field 2 it's the same deal so I'll go to far field 2 change that to velocity inlet um, I'll say components one meter per second okay then far field three, it's a pressure boundary condition and the absolute pressure is one atmosphere, which means the gauge pressure is zero. And the reference pressure I can check by going to operating conditions. So that's set to, you know, uh, one atmosphere. And so I'll go to far field three. I'll set that to pressure outlet, which is the boundary condition type that'll give me the option to set the pressure. Um, where the flow is going out and the gauge pressure is zero, which is what I want. So I'll say, okay, um, this is the interior. It's not a boundary condition, so I can ignore that. Um, and then plate is set to wall. And if I say edit, okay, it's set the, the boundary condition there is no slip, which is um, the default in fluent. And so if I go back, okay, the default is u equal to zero, v equal to zero. So we have all the boundary conditions at this point, and our boundary value problem is completely defined. Um, so let's save the project, and we'll go in and solve the boundary value problem next.